Once malicious or suspicious processes have been identified, it's necessary to stop them. As we mentioned, trying to stop a process which is monitored by other processes is quite difficult. You can't stop all of them at the same time. If you stop one process, it will be automatically restarted. Malicious programs not only hide with the use of other processes, but often modify system components to oversee them. The solution is freezing a malicious process instead of killing it. Switch the process to the suspend mode. A suspended process does not execute, it cannot operate. It doesn't use up any CPU time and it seems to be placed outside the system's scheduler queue. A suspended process is still, however, marked as running, so it won't be relaunched by other processes. If all associated controlling processes are suspended, you'll be able to terminate them one by one. On terminating the processes, your next task is preventing them from relaunching in the system restart. This can be accomplished with the use of msconfig, a standard Windows utility. If you believe msconfig, the number of automatic startup processes is very small. The reality, however, is that several hundred applications and processes are run. Hundreds of locations are checked. That's why we'll rather use another program. Auto runs is a component of sysinternal suite. After you make sure a malicious program can't relaunch, you need to physically remove it from the computer. Removing a program can be more complicated than it seems. If some other process maintains an open handle to a file, making the system unable to delete the file, this can be a problem. To identify a parent process, we'll again resort to Process Explorer, or a third component of SysInternal Suite, Process Monitor. With this utility, stopping an entire process won't be necessary. It'd be enough to terminate a handle to an open file in the process. If it fails, you can also attempt to remove the file at System Reboot. We'll schedule the removal, but the operation will be executed very early on during the launch of the operating system. This will occur ahead of any other process capable of blocking the removal. To accomplish this, we can use a fourth tool that is a component of this internal suite, Move File. Let's discover this procedure step by step in practice. First, check what information on processes that are automatically run at system start is returned by msconfig. Besides system services, there are only three entries in the startup tab. Only three programs are supposed to run at startup. Let's compare this list against the information returned by Autoruns, a component of SysInternals. Launching the program, you can see that the list of tabs that represent sites that can contain automatically run files is quite long. The launched computer scan isn't yet completed, but you can already see there are more results than three. During the scan, we can move to the Logon tab. As you can see, some programs start automatically when you log on to your computer. The suspicious elements in this section include programs that claim to be provided by Microsoft, but have not yet been verified. In a moment, we'll run an automatic verification of all entries similar to the ones performed in Process Explorer. Programs are automatically run in Windows not only at logons. Environment extensions, system shell extensions, can also load programs. You can even see here an error, a program or a library that should be loaded but can't be found. There are also many tasks that can be scheduled to start up automatically at system boot. You can see here one instance of such a task. Each time you locate this entry, you can delete it or verify it online but also track it with Process Explorer and check the properties of the process. As far as registry keys are concerned, 
You can jump directly to the place in the registry where the entry is found. The scan has ended in the meantime. This is a demo version of the system, so there isn't a lot of entries. You can still discover some things that shouldn't be there. Some weird drivers that have been deleted are on the list. The entries are not found. You should either delete the entries or verify them in some other way. Since the displayed list is quite long, it's useful that the application implements a way to filter results and compare save entries with an updated list. Filtering can be set to hide Windows entries. This is the default option. You can also hide Microsoft entries. By checking the second option from the top, you can hide all Microsoft results that have been verified through the use of digital signature. Unchecking the options will automatically expand the list of startup files. The programs you saw before should be paid close attention. These processes or programs can be suspicious. We'll also show how you can remove a file that can't be deleted in a standard manner without the use of move file. This is an excuse to showcase another helpful tool, Process Monitor. Process Monitor captures in real time the activity of all or of selected processes. As you can see, Explorer EXE performs some operations on the registry. You can also view the result of each attempted operation, whether it's successful or failed. We'll create the test directory in the command line and go to the directory. Next, we'll create a subfolder test2. Now let's locate the sequence of operations executed by our program. By right-clicking on a program, you can create dynamic filters. The filter we'll create will include the CMD EXE process. The list of actions that are visible in the main window includes only the operations executed by our process. Like the other utilities we've shown, Process Monitor includes a feature that makes it possible to identify processes. You can easily find a specific process. Process Monitor is not restricted to tracking system programs activity. It is also a great troubleshooting tool for programs that require escalated permissions to run. We'll talk about this later. In that case, the program's window will contain error messages. They can be used to check program activity and grant a user permissions to files, folders, and registry keys without granting the user administrator privileges. It's an important feature that can help you implement the principle of least privilege.